Hello everyone, Tea Talk with your girl Irene T and Hia. In this platform, we're going to be talking about life and uh, social issues. And today, there's this particular topic that has been running around our minds, and we want to share it with you guys. So, are you ready? Of course, I am. <laughs> in the USA uh, wherever country you are in I'm sure you will find uh, places where you fit into particular circumstances based on when where you left your hometown or your home country too but we are in Europe particularly in Sweden and we all have our first time experiences what I notice is that whoever you meet wherever you land whatever city you get into first determines and plays a great role on to be where you are going to end up or maybe um how your first two three four years are well, going to look like and also it impacts your mental state yes 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 all of that rotates around who you meet who you surround yourself with the people you follow the people you listen to so they were sharing a first time experience in europe and we're well, going to be listening to Ia. Are you ready, girl? Of course I'm ready. <laughs> hot or cold? Hot? <laughs> Very hot. Very hot. We're about to spill something. We are spilling it hot. <laughs> Very hot. So, yo. Oh, when was it? What was your first time? When was, what year was that? That was 2019, 2020, you know, the school starts, yeah, the school year the starts in year. September, mm -hmm. 2019, okay, 2019, yeah, okay, 2020, yeah, and um, I wasn't ready to come to Europe, I know, I wasn't ready I know. at all, I know, this is a journey I cannot say I planned, because from way back from Africa, I was in a state of mind where I kept asking myself, okay, do I want to do this? Mm -hmm. Am I ready to do this? Mm -hmm. Am I sure I want to do this? Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that feeling. Until when I got the visa and I was like, okay, you know what? I've spent so much. I've already invested so much. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. This is happening. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell anyone out there who is preparing to leave Africa for Europe, please be ready mentally mentally be ready mentally if you can be ready financially too it's going to be a plus for you i mean mentally when i got here i knew just one person and okay. the person my school was down south mm -hmm. and the person was in the capital that's up north mm -hmm. And there was not so much this person could do at that time. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's so far. It's so far, it's yeah. Six it's, yeah, 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 definitely. And when I came here, like I said, I was not ready. Mm -hmm. I did not prepare for accommodation. That's a story for another day. I was told not to prepare for accommodation. Yeah. Yeah. I was told where my school is, there are no jobs, so... I should just look for a town where I'll have a job and I live there instead. I didn't understand how all this works back then. Yeah, I'm a newbie. You, 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 tr you, tr you trusted those that were here already. The I person, mean, the person my who was first here. night in this place, I slept on the floor. That's crazy. On the floor. That's the weirdest thing I've heard. Oh my god! I slept on the floor. On your first night? I don't remember. How did you make it out of the out of the airport? No, no. The person I met is because I landed in Stockholm. Uh -huh. And this family friend actually helped me out, put me 
like he took me in for the first day i think and then put me in the train to where you were going to, to. where i was going to hmm. yeah there i was safe okay. i had so much help there okay. i'm talking about from the moment i landed where you you were supposed my school to was. yeah i slept on the floor without a mattress jesus it's september it was september september in scandinavia is like winter did you have like any bed sheets any cover yeah we had we, we picked up some bed sheets because the the trash rooms in the student accommodation oh my god no 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 in the student accommodation they have the trash rooms and they have these rooms where where you don't where you have all things oh yeah oh yeah you can put them okay yeah okay. so we went in there we couldn't find my dresses so we picked up the bed covers i slept on the floor oh. in a student room with um like i think we're with three or three or four other guys i cannot mm -hmm. really remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was the only girl yeah girl and i'm i'm grateful i'm grateful because I, I had, had some I met this person. Mm -hmm. The person who took us in was a new student like us, mm -hmm. but he was on scholarship. Mm -hmm. So with the scholarship, people is kind of different. Your your accommodation is already arranged for, and everything. So the issue is with the person who introduced me to this student. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone holds your hand even for a second mm -hmm. in Europe. You feel like you owe the person something. Yeah. Yeah. If you're someone Sometimes, who yeah. knows how to be grateful. Yeah. You feel like you owe the person you owe the person something. So I got closer to these people because I was like, okay, if this person could help me even get the floor to sleep on, it means I'm on the right track. It means mm -hmm. this person can actually like direct me. Direct to you, guide you how and I to get go close and get... to these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And every day I'm with them. Mm -hmm. I'm helping out mm -hmm. with the kids. Mm -hmm. I'm helping out the wife with little chores. What, was this man were married? This guy that it was a couple. You? It was a couple. Okay. So I help out with the chores with the kids. And guess what? It becomes a routine. It becomes a routine where it's cool. It's them. I love kids. You know that. I know that. I, 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 know, know, that. I know that. Yeah. I you know, know that. And I, have I, a week I know what you're talking about because I like, I, I've had two entries in this country. My very first entry, I actually went into uh, a lady's house. She had kids and she was expecting me to do th those exact same thing, which I couldn't. That's the difference. I, I between you and, that's the difference between you and I. Mm -hmm. Like I will do, I will do these things. Mm -hmm. I will do them because, not because I'm weak, you know me, I'm not yeah. weak, but because I um, tend to get into, how do I put this? I have this mentality like when you room behave like the Romans. Mm -hmm. And I have this, this thought process like, okay, if I am in your house, I will just abide by the rules. And since as I was going there off. I was just doing those things. Mm -hmm. And anyone who knows me knows that if you want to get into my heart, you use your kids. So this person understood this very fast and did it. They used their kids. And if I tell you that, this person goes for her language classes, her driving lessons, she comes and leaves me the kids. Most of the time, mm. like when we got close to each other, it became like my irregular my, something, irregular yeah. something. Mm. and uh, I'm just struggling between being around these kids I love so much, mm. and maybe if I have a class, if I have a class or something to do, mm. and I, w I find it hard to complain. That's just me. I find it hard to tell you like, oh, I can't. I don't know how to say no. Learn. That's the problem I have. You, you have, to, you have you've noticed it. You have to I learn. don't know how to say no. <laughs> That's one thing everybody should learn how to do. Saying, you see these two letter words? N, O, no. It's so hard learn to how to say it. Learn. <laughs> Especially when it comes to anything that has to do with kids. I don't know how to say no. Mm. So I kept doing this for close to six months. 
Are you sleeping with me? Because right now? at that point, I had left the, the place where I was sleeping on the floor because this this guy who took us in, mm -hmm. in his room, mm -hmm. after two weeks, mm -hmm. I don't know who said what to him. He got us up one morning and told us if we want to keep sleeping on his floor, we have to give him 100 euros every week. After, after what period of time did he tell, give you this information? After like a week and some days. So we found <sighs> ourselves in a place where we were begging this guy to just give us a few days so we can get accommodation for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky. I sorted myself out. Mm -hmm. And it was after I sorted myself out that I started doing this routine thing I'm telling you about. So this means that for like five to six months, mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking of ways to get a job to be able to pay my fees for the next semester. I was stressed, like super stressed. Mm -hmm. Because with time, I started understanding how this system works. Mm -hmm. Even if you get the 30 credits they want, mm -hmm. you need to be active in school, meaning you need to pay you need to keep going to school. Mm -hmm. If you're not active in school, when you have not changed, transi transitioned from a student permit to a working mm -hmm. permit, the school is writing the immigration and telling them you're not active in school. Yes. Even if for one semester, they're telling them you're not active in school and the immigration is writing you back. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. Be before we even like, like go um, to the next stage, I want to take this moment to, to explain this shortly. Um, it's been many changes it, since guys have learned to shoot without missing birds have learned to fly without perching that is how it works with immigration let nobody who was here in 2020 give you advice based on oh, how yeah. it happened for them when oh, they were here yes. because these people they get updated they get mm. they, they upgrade their system they upgrade their thoughts they upgrade their, their, their methods things change all the time all the time things change all the time the best and the most efficient way to get yourself updated on how to behave how to go about things is to call or to read and every read. information is always Research. on every platform don't listen to your cousin don't listen to your brother who is somewhere to your friend who has stayed here for 10 years please do yourself a favor go into the system and read that is going to help you let's okay. let's keep going and then like i said I did this routine thing for close to five to six months. Six months. And the thing is, you get lost in the routine because the the people most of the time they act nice. Yeah, it's free. So <laughs> in your mind, you're like, oh, she she cannot want me to fail. Yeah, he cannot it's want free. Me to fail. <laughs> he he's like he's a nice person. The day I was saved. Because one day, we went to visit another couple. Mm -hmm. Like, there were other people there mm -hmm. who were eating, drinking. Mm -hmm. And one guy, also from our country, he could not take it anymore. Looks like he had been observing this mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he goes like, he tells these other people like, why are you guys doing this to this girl? Why are you guys not telling her what's up? Yeah. And I'm like, telling me what's up? And he keeps going and he's like, why are you not telling this lady that her student permit is going to soon expire? Mm -hmm. And if this semester passes and she cannot afford the next semester, she's going to be in deep shit. Yeah. And if she is not able to get a job, like the guy just kept talking and mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And these people were so ashamed. Mm -hmm. And this guy said, tomorrow, I think it was the next day or a few days after, um, let's meet at so and so place. I'm going to give you a small job, like something to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. The people mm -hmm. I was close to thinking they were going to guide me. Yeah. Even to tell me that, go to this website, go to this website, go to this website and look for jobs. Mm -hmm. No. As in, no. I. Like, I never had that. Yeah. Right up to when this guy took me mm. to this um, newspaper sorting company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did it for a while. 
and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered I had this friend from university. Mm -hmm. And this girl, she's been there for me from a distance. Yeah. She's been there. And that brings me to say something to people who are out there and thinking of coming apart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of the best kind of help you can get from people who are here is not financial. No. No. It's more of them connecting you to people who can help you get jobs, connecting you to people who can help you like have your way around the immigration rules and regulations. Yeah. It's being around people who can tell you do this, do that, read this, read that. Even if they tell you to do something, it's your place to read about it. Yeah. Take the advice they're giving you, but make sure that you're researching on that. that. Yeah, and that doesn't, that doesn't just apply to those coming here. That applies generally in life. Whatever you need to have in life, anybody would give to that thing that you need. It's not helping you. Whoever is showing you how to get that thing by yourself, whatever it is, yeah. that person has given you the best help you can ever, ever, ever get in your life. Mm -hmm. If you ask for information and somebody tells you, go and get this information on this website, that is the best answer you could ever get. And this person telling you, oh, yes, I know this thing costs 50,000. This thing costs 25,000. No, the person tells you, yes, I know about it. WW dot this is where you get all that information. That is the best help. You might think that this person is being snobbish or that person just being hard on you. The person has given you the best answer you could ever, ever get. So please do learn to ask people how to get what you need instead of ask, letting them give you what you actually need. Take this and apply it to every other thing in your life. Trust me. That's true. Like I was saying, this friend who has been there from a distance, mm -hmm. she didn't give me like money, money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she gave me the connections. Yeah. She connected me to the person who helped me to have like my first reasonable job. Yeah. It was in the middle of COVID. I came to Europe in the middle of, of COVID. COVID. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was crazy. around about that time. Yes, I was traveling for six hours mm -hmm. from the town where my school is mm -hmm. to go and work for like two days. I just needed money to pay fees for the next semester. Yeah, that's all I wanted, and I was ready to do anything. Anything. To do that. And this person who helped me get that job he didn't ask me for anything in return. That's how the real help comes. That is the with real no help. obligation. And right up till date, I'm friends with this person. Yeah. That is the real help. Actually, I know that person. And shout out to you, guy. They connected me to this person to date this person. And you know, sometimes when you're stressed, some things just don't settle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I communicated this to this person, to this guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going through a lot of stress right now. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed at how understanding this guy was. Yeah. He was like, you know what? I know what you're going through. The most important thing is for you to have a job. Mm -hmm. And I, right up to date, I tell him, I remind him, like, I'm so grateful to you. He's a nice guy. I got this job and I've moved a lot, Irene. Yeah, you've gone I've through. I've moved a lot. She's I've been through. <laughs> She's been through some. She's been through some. You see how beautiful and glowing she is? What am I talking about? Being She's through? learned the hard way. I have suffered. You, you've learned the hard way. You've learned everything the hard way. I have Every suffered. Every single thing. Like, that was just, that's just one part of the story. Yeah. When I moved, I went to another town where someone actually said, oh, come to my house. I'm going to help you. I go to your house. You're actually helping me. And then your wife starts putting up a show. Yeah. I, there's another thing. Almost every woman in Europe is insecure for one reason like or the, the other. Insecurity. <laughs> for one reason or the other. Please, if you have your neighbor, your neighbor, your childhood friend who is married 
and they're asking you to come to Europe, they're going to stay in their house. Please start looking for where you're going to oh, live, okay? You start will find looking yourself for where you out are going to live. No one day. The, the, the woman just needs to be. They are all insecure to like, one reason or the other. She just needs to just sleep one day and imagine that your that her husband is laughing too much with you. Or I'm, I mean, she doesn't even need to imagine. The thing is, you're just, sleeping outside. It's, it's, I don't know what is wrong with women getting married they are these days. They're telling you to leave their house. The level of insecurity is something I cannot explain. I was given in the month of um, I think it was the month of um, September. Again. Yeah, it was September again. Of the following year, I was given a was it four days notice to quit someone's house. Oh my god! The same person because his wife was not his wife. What was his wife's problem? She just felt insecure. I was giving. And yeah, that's 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 one thing we're dealing with. But not everyone though, because um, there is this lady I became very good friends with just because of the way she welcomed me in her in her home. It's not, it's not like I was homeless. I, I actually had a place to stay, but this was like a family because her brother, her husband is like a brother to me. So I used to like love to visit their family for weekends, for holidays and my stuff. The way this lady welcomed me, even before my kids could be here when I was single, I was, you know, I, I understand the insecurity. So sometimes I just avoid it. But so, you know, when you go to somebody's house and you know he's married to a woman, you don't, you, you, you want to work on your toes. Now you, you, you're working on eggshells. But this lady was just like, no, feel free. And she was just, just so nice. And I got close to, it's not, it does, it's not on every case. But in most cases, guys, please be ready to work on eggshells. Best of all, look for your plan Plans. B and get a place to stay. Now comes the part where I was telling you be financially ready. Mm -hmm. So that you have your own place. Don't say we didn't tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are speaking from experience. So. Yeah. In Europe, the best thing you can do for yourself is have your own place where you can, like, where you have a roof covering your head where you don't need to work on eggshell for anybody. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. And see, guys, if I, if I have one advice I'll give anyone about coming to Europe, I personally will not bring anyone or will not even want to hold the hand of anyone that wants to rely on me to do anything for them. Yeah. Develop the attitude of going to dig out for yourself. Because in most cases, people coming from Cameroon, they always expect people to show you uh, to show you the way around, trust people. That is when they feast on you. These people don't it's like when they move to Europe, they, it's like you keep your you take your hat and hang it somewhere at Dwala International Airport or Simale before before you start transiting, you know. Because the level of something, I remember telling a family member of mine. Don't really don't think that because this one is your best friend. That's how it's oh, going. No. I want to go and say my best friend. I said that best friend oh, that you left no. in Cameroon, eh? It's not that best friend that is living here abroad. So if that is your plan A, then you have no plan. Then you have no plan. If you're planning to leave your house without money, and the only thing you are relying on is the friendship that you built out there with someone. And you are leaning on that friendship to do everything, to give you information, to give you accommodation, to show you how to go you don't have a plan yet you're think, in for a surprise. Think, think, think again you're think again you don't have any plan that's what i'm what, what, please there might be exceptions but to be on the safe side you don't have any plan plan again another thing apart from the people who make you walk on eggshells in their houses or the ones who are not going to want to give you the information you need there are the men who are going to tell you they want to help you, my dear. <laughs> run. <laughs> you know, I told okay. someone... Don't run. Be wise. I, I told someone, if you are in Cameroon, you don't have any boyfriend that you really trust, you're not married and you don't have any child, and you are above 30, don't travel. If you intend to get married and build a family... Stay in Cameroon. Yeah, they are vultures. She's right, though. <laughs> As she they are vultures. She's right. You not before you get the right person to have a child, a first She's one. Right. You need you need bionic eyes. Right. You need a very big loop to be able to find the right one. She's right. 
And trust me, you are going to find the good among the worst. She's right. <laughs> Everything she says is right. So please, like, there are so many things that you need to be saying. I'll just say <laughs> she's right. <laughs> There are so many things you need to take into consideration if you are planning to move out to Europe. Because, like I said, first time experiences. This is Ia who is narrating her story. We have not even gone through the story. But you realize that the first six months of her life was wasted by people she believed were going to help her, were going to guide her, were going to direct her. These people, I mean, let me cut it short, please. Mm -hmm. They were not obligated to help me. Yo. Let's be very clear. No, that's that. another thing. It was not an obligation. Yeah. They were not my family. Like, we just met here. That's why up to date, I don't begrudge them. I do not begrudge them. I'm saying these things because it's a topic that came up on this session. Mm -hmm. I don't begrudge them. Sometimes I'm even grateful to some of them. And that's the thing. When you leave Africa, nobody owes you anything here. Even when you're in Africa. You know, I, I used to tell oh, everybody. In Africa, maybe you can say you have your family, they owe you something. No, no, no. Let, 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 let's put it touch to tab, let's part. From 21 year old, the truth of the matter is nobody owes you. Shit. There are so many people who are unable to build a life or thing for themselves because they are believing that one of their rich uncles or their rich aunties or their rich other brother who has made it somewhere is going to settle them. It's, it's better you keep in your mind that as an adult, nobody owes you. If they do help you out of love or bloodline, something. Be grateful and thank them. I mean, but the truth is that they don't owe you. I mean, so I'm telling them, don't come to Europe thinking, oh, um, this person is wicked because they didn't show me this. They didn't do that. They have no obligations towards you. You have to be smart. B based on you that, have before, to be smart. Before, there's something I'm going to tell, tell us guys. It's my opinion. I stand corrected. If you're not about to do a favor to someone, don't do it. Don't promise it because you don't owe anybody to do them anything. So if you know you are incapable of doing it properly, please to the end. don't do it because you are limiting these people opportunity to actually get their kind the of right help, help they need. Yeah. So if you're not about to help, whatever you do to them is wickedness. I would say it's wickedness. You know, you say you don't, you, that, that you, you, you'll be grateful. Me for me, that's bullshit. They were wicked. No, that's bullshit for me. If somebody is helping, they're helping. If you're not helping and you're exploiting, that is being wicked because you have been here, you know the realities, yet you choose to squeeze the little energy or the little light that is in somebody that doesn't know their way around. You prefer to shed their face, put a dark cloud on it so that they don't know where they're going to because it's convenient for them to stay where they are because it benefits you. That is wickedness. You want to be nice and not feel like you are angry at them. That's why you've made it to feel like they did something good to you. Yeah, they did it bad to you. <laughs> I don't know who they. I don't know who they are. You did her bad. <laughs> See, I was talking about the men. Yes. Some are good. Some are so so. Some men will stay in your white. Some are very. <laughs> Okay, let's stay on the context of first experience. Yeah. What we wanted to start, the, the direction we wanted to start going is a story for another day. It's, a, it's another day story. Let's stay on this context. Yeah. When you get here, my dear, be it. It's mostly the men. The women don't have time to make you to make fake promises. Man, I was with a woman. I was with a woman. And the what that girl did to me. I, I'm not pissed about her, but I'll never forget. I will never ever forget the, the, the extent she went. I will never forget it. Okay. <laughs> Amy, continue. Yes. <laughs> These guys will tell you, oh, um, let's just be together. I will give you paper. Cliche. Honey, let uh, me talk to the lady. Say, honey, please. If you are not careful, you will find yourself 
spray from north to south, south is to west. Yeah, they, 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 they can waste you. The mess you will find yourself in. They'll, they'll waste you in no it's time. Unbelievable. Yeah. You have to be a very principled person. Yeah. You will hear all sorts of name calling. Mm. I told you what happened yesterday. I told you that I met some I met somebody in this live session. Oh and yeah, I yeah, yeah. Told that him story. Off. Mm. I told him off. I went into a live session and I met someone and it was a live session people we from the same country like mm. us. Mm. And they were talking about oh um, um Cameroonians, we need to help each other. Helping each in other, this supporting country. each other, grow. And this stuff. guy was actually contributing. Yes, and I remembered what happened between the alteration I had with him, and I couldn't hold it back. That's the thing with me. When I can't hold it back, I'm going to say it. Mm. I told him, excuse me, when you're talking about helping people, you open your mouth and you're speaking. Do you remember what happened two and a half years ago? It was like, I, said, I just reminded him. I said, someone took my hand and brought to you. I cannot forget. The person actually brought me to you. I was begging you. You have a company. The person said, see, she doesn't speak this language so much. Take her just like someone who is just going to be cleaning your place. Mm. And you thought I was bait. Mm. And when you tried what you tried and I told you off, Back then, I didn't even know this person had a wife with four kids. A very beautiful one. A wife with four a kids. A very so. beautiful wife. But I just told this person off. And I discovered later that I had wife. And when I told this person off, the person came back to the person who brought me to me. And I was like, oh, she's not serious. She's not serious with, with her life. She doesn't know what she wants. And then, and then I reminded him in that life session. I told him, never in your life tell me that I don't know what to do. When I came to Europe, I don't know how gave me transport fare. Mm. I all paid my fees. Don't ever try it. You don't know me. You don't know where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. If you tried what you wanted to do, I didn't work. You should have just gone your way. And I told him off. And uh, I told him, I've already said what I had in... I, I kept my mind for mm. the past two and a half. Mm. I just had to say it. Mm. Ladies, I'm begging you. Some are good or some will actually help you. You understand? But <laughs> when they tell you they want to help you, Please do your background checks. Mm -hmm. One day I was talking about doing, always doing background checks in life, and someone told me, uh, "Are you FBI? You gonna be doing background checks?" Mm -hmm. I always, I would prefer that. I would prefer to know that I have just one information about a situation mm -hmm. than just being blank about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So that's like um, just some of the experience I had when. I came here. Yeah. But the truth is, these experiences made me so strong, Irene. Yeah. I, I, I have not had what I want yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. But trust me, I am 10 times stronger than I was when I came to this country. If you're still standing here after 2019. Oh my God. I am. It means you like, a milestone. I am 10 times stronger, Irene. Yeah. 100 times stronger, even. You're still standing, girl. I'm no more that scared little woman. I was so scared. I used to cry. Like, I used to, oh God, Irene, call my mom. Call my mother. She calls me in the morning, I'm crying. She calls me in the afternoon, I'm crying. She calls me in the evening, I'm crying. One day, my mother said, you know what? Pack your things and come back. Can you remind us what we're doing in Cameroon again? Oh, what's that job again you were doing? <laughs> what was the salary again? That's not good. <laughs> See, there's, there's, there's one thing I remember when I came over here and I got my first job, like, uh, was it two months after I came here? Thank you, Miranda. I'll never forget what you did to me when I came here. Uh, I will also I always appreciate you. You know that very much. Uh, this young girl, she's a young girl, she's younger than me. She was very helpful. She was really, really, she was really helpful. She was really you helpful. Were lucky. Uh, no, I mean, like, I wasn't lucky. Um, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I was lucky because I considered like all the journey itself just some kind of bad luck. 
<laughs> see, uh, see, see, there was not a night. There was not that I would see. wake up and I would tell myself, what kind of bad luck is we this? We have suffered. I was, you know, for many months, each night I said, what kind of bad luck is this? For many nights, each time I put my leg up at 1 a.m. because I'm about to go to work in the cold, I'll ask myself, what kind oh, of bad, bad luck, luck is this? this? And the worst of it is, I wasn't even having peace in the house where I was. Because that's the worst. The woman like, did the everything worst. to make my life a living hell. And then I look at this girl, and I look at my life in Cameroon, and I look at myself, and I ask myself 50,000 questions. I couldn't gather. And please, if you're a friend of gossips, don't travel to Europe. This place is heart sensitive. I if you know if, if, if that you are very that. sensitive to gossip, stay stay in Cameroon, you know. But you know, sometimes I say I'm a good girl, we don't see A to Y, like gossip lady shake me. <laughs> I was this kind of person. Because people people, people, will do, people will do you bad and they gossip. will make sure that they make everybody to dislike you yeah. for something you didn't do. Yeah. And they will tell stories about you. That you yourself, you'll be interested to know what you did next. You know, you will sit down and hear your own story and you'll be very curious to find out what you did next. Like, what and what did I do again? <laughs> and yeah, and what came after that, you know? So that is, that's how bad it can get. If you are, you're easily depressed, stay back home because that is how bad things get. Or if you're easily triggered by people talking about you, or calling your name, I was like that. Stay, stay, because I know what. I mean, my yeah, name. yeah. There's, there's nothing about young girls or old girls or men or women. They are all the same. The young and the old, they gossip alike. The men and the women, they gossip alike. So nowhere is safe. <laughs> I, re I remember, I remember threatening to go to someone's house and fight them because they said something, and then they reminded me, that, Madam. Why? Yeah, in Europe. This is one of, this is one of them. They say sensitive people. Yeah, in well, my country, <laughs> you go to that house, they will not fight you back. They will call the police on you. <laughs> they, they, and you will find your eyes back in Cameroon. Definitely. And I was like, okay, when I meet them at in a party or something, I will tell them off. And then, by the time I got to understand how Europe works, you know what? Talk. Yeah. Talk. If you need more things to talk about me, Come and ask me. I will willingly tell you. I will sit you down and tell you my story so that you will go and tell people out there. Talk. That's how I become. Please talk. And guys, talk. Uh, when, when Ia said her experience now, she said something about her student permit expiring without her going to renew it and not knowing until somebody brought it, somebody out of the blue brought it. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you the things to take into consideration when you move here to, for your first time. The first thing you have to think about is who is picking you from the airport or how you are finding your way out of the airport to wherever you're going to. Wherever you're going to, how are you going to accommodate yourself? Not for one day, not for two days. For the period of time when you're going to stay in that place, where are you going to live and how are you going to pay for your accommodation in that place? Those are the first things that you need to put in place before moving. If not, so you find yourself sleeping on the floor like you, you have a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And then, what you need to be very, very conscious of, and for you to be able to walk this third step effectively, you need to have an accommodation. Because if you don't have a place yeah. to stay, your head will not think properly. Because the weather here is catastrophic. You know, mm. when you must say catastrophe, it means it mm. is terrible. It is beyond thought. So you need to have a place where you will stay, where you can put your head on the bed and start thinking straight. Because what you need to be conscious of is what kind of permits you have that brought you into this country. How long is that permit valid? When are you supposed to make it, extend it or change it? How are you supposed to change it? Those are the information that you, keep, you, need, you need to keep aligned, you need to keep in place all the time you need to keep that in check all the time and make sure that you have all the requirements straight on that you have that or you at least you are aware of it and you know how to go about this these things are what is going to make your life go smoothly without you wasting time unreasonable in this country because if you have these things wrong you'll find yourself spending five six seven years 
eight years yeah. in this country without finding your way. Mm -hmm. you, you'll be struggling to find your way before knowing how your life is going to begin. That's why I said if you don't have a child and a husband, stay. I because you can lose five years of your life like that before you realize that, oh, my life is starting right now. The, I had um, um, one family friend, the person who arranged for my pickup and like, drop off. Mm -hmm. He told me something I've never forgotten. He said, yeah. One tiny mistake can make you waste five years. That is very true. Place. Yeah. Every day when I feel anxious about my stay here, I think about what he said. Mm -hmm. So, guys, that's what we have for you today, I guess. Irene. Yeah, but there's, there's one last thing I want you to touch. The job. What you work with, I'm, 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 I'm bringing this last point because of one thing, I'm going, and that thing shaped my life till today. When I came here, I took out my laptop and I was going in because this is something I was used to doing in Cameroon. I was used to going online, do researches, get new knowledge, look for jobs. So I just carried that attitude back here. I went to jobs in Sweden, jobs in this city, jobs in this. And I will have different platforms, different websites where I can look for jobs. And I was going to them and reading everything. And I was learning the language on YouTube. I was doing a lot of things by myself on my laptop. Now, what I realized is that the lady I was in whose house I was living, she was very angry. And she seemed to be pissed off with the fact that I was a lawyer. And she, she felt like I was overvaluing myself to go into a website and look for jobs. And she boldly told me to my face, the only job I can do in this country is distributing newspapers at night. Which I didn't understand. And I'm like, why should that be the only job? And she asked me, so I think that all the other Cameroonians doing the job, or all the other people doing the job are stupid people. That's the only job that's available. And I was convinced that it wasn't the only job available because I had seen other people from other countries doing different jobs. I had seen Congolese, Kenyans selling in shops, in big shops, doing a, a, a customer service, customer service agent. I've seen them. When I go to office, I see foreigners doing different jobs. So I was like, why should Cameroonians only distribute newspapers? So already I felt like I needed to find out what these other people do to be able to, wear, to be where they are. If I wasn't that kind of person, I would just believe that I will do just newspaper and I will stay to newspaper job. Guess what? I choose to learn the language, something that many people did not do. And I was looking for other jobs. That move, that move that made that girl really angry is what paved my way into the country where I am living today. I learned how to find my way to integrate the system on my own, not believing in what other people believed, not accepting to be limited by the beliefs of other people and refusing to follow the road that other people had followed for years. Because till then, there are people who are doing newspaper work for 15 years with two master's degree, who are doing cleaning. No offense to you if you are doing it. Really no offense. What I'm saying is that people can do things differently. I mean, you see, this job topic <laughs> you brought. How yes. about we take you for our next, next session? It's we, such a broad topic. Yeah, we can do I that. have so much to say about this. Yeah. Both personal experiences and what I have seen around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I just need to add it because yeah. that too depends on who you meet yeah, the first time you yeah. get into the country. It's such an interesting topic, this job thing. Yeah. That we have, we definitely have to put it on the table while sipping tea. Yes. That is another topic for our tea talk and that will be next week. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Please, if you're a first time traveler, I'm sure, I'm definitely sure I can bet my little finger that you have your story. Drop it down here in the comment section. Share a little bit with us. And what now? If you want to come in someday, just send on a, send on a, put it in the comment section or come into our inbox and tell us you'd like to share your story. We'll gladly listen For to you. Sure. We'll gladly listen to you because you know what? Once we share, other people get to learn. That's oh, the essence. Yeah experience remains the best teacher so do you have any last words here not really i mean all i can say is um we hope you learn something from 
this session mm -hmm. and we hope you put it we hope you put it into practice and keep watching us you're gonna learn so much and um, you can also like Irene said if you want to participate in these sessions you just need to write it down mm -hmm. and or you get in contact with either Irene or myself mm -hmm. and share your experiences or banter mm. if you want to banter about a particular topic which doesn't necessarily have to be your experience yeah it's okay. You're welcome. Bring it down. Bring it down. And it's it all. Let's see. We see take it hot or cold. And trust me, we we'll spill it. Always. For sure. We we'll spill it. So, guys, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow the page. And above all, please recommend us. Thank you for watching. It's your girls, Irene and Ia.